This is a video I don't even know where to start. I, <laughs> you either laugh or you cry. Um, and I'm sure we'll do some of both in this video. Maybe you've experienced a chemical pregnancy, a miscarriage, a missed miscarriage, a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, a stillbirth, infant loss. No matter what type of loss you have experienced, your feelings are valid and I am so incredibly sorry for your loss. This is a safe place for you to share your story in the comments down below. If you're interested in hearing about my first pregnancy loss where I had a ruptured ectopic pregnancy and had to remove my right fallopian tube, I will link that story down below. Daniel and I waited a month afterwards. Uh, one cycle we did not try and then we began to try again. On our third cycle trying, we ended up getting pregnant. On January 9th of this year, I took a pregnancy test and found out that I was expecting. I cried and cried and cried and cried because I was so excited that we were finally getting our rainbow baby. And I was just so excited. I immediately told Daniel, who had a very different reaction to me and was very scared and very not excited, very um, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Pregnancy after loss is so, unique a lot of the unadulterated joy that you're just so excited to have a baby and all the things it just kind of goes away because you know that just because you have a positive pregnancy test doesn't mean that you're going to get to bring home a baby because i had already lost my right fallopian tube in the ruptured topic pregnancy um, my OB shared that as soon as I found out that I was pregnant again, God willing, that I needed to set up an appointment immediately to run blood work and see if my HCG was rising appropriately to determine if I was having another ectopic or not. My greatest fear was having another ectopic, possibly losing my left tube and having, having no fallopian tubes left and not being able to ever have kids by myself, on my own, without medical intervention. I went in weekly for six weeks to have ultrasounds and blood work done. We were able to rule out an ectopic pregnancy as my HCG levels were rising appropriately. And at the next ultrasound, they were able to see where that gestational sac was, even though you couldn't see the baby quite yet, it was still a little bit too early. And in the weeks to come, we saw our baby, we saw a heartbeat on the screen. It was such a special journey and an exciting journey because with our first pregnancy loss, we weren't able to have an ultrasound ever and we weren't able to have those experiences. Um, so it just felt like such progress hurdles okay we've it's not an ectopic okay i am pregnant okay we've got a heartbeat like just you know taking those strides at my second to last ob appointment they said that everything was looking good uh, my numbers were all very high my progesterone was high my hcg was exceedingly high all the things um, there was a strong healthy heartbeat and so they then said that i could come in in two weeks instead of every week <laughs> because things were looking um looking really good. At this point, we shared with my parents, we shared with my in-laws, I shared with my Bible study group who are my prayer warriors. And as I mentioned after pregnancy loss, I do think very much so there was never a day that I wasn't worried. There was never a day that I wasn't aware that I could lose this baby at any, any, any given moment. Um, but I was hopeful and excited. We began looking for a car that could fit a car seat because I have a Mini Cooper. <laughs> and we began talking about possible names and just doing all the typical fun and exciting things that you do when you find out that you're pregnant. Two weeks after seeing the heartbeat, we went in for the last ultrasound appointment that we had on February 20th. We went into the room so excited and as the, she was doing the ultrasound, she was incredibly silent. Um, she didn't say anything. She typically shares, okay, you're measuring at, you know, seven weeks, seven days, and here's the heartbeat and da 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 da, you know, all the things. And um, there was just silence, just deafening silence. I realized before Daniel that something was very wrong and 
I just, I remember being frozen and not able to verbally say anything, but just thinking in my head, like screaming in my head, just go ahead and say if something's wrong or is something wrong or why aren't you talking? Like, I just remember being so angry and being like, why? Why isn't she talking? Why isn't she saying anything? Like, if something's wrong, we need to know, like communicate with us. Just being so frustrated um, in my head. And, and then I finally said something and I just said, is something wrong? She said that she was gonna send us to another room to talk to the PA. And I just immediately knew and started hysterically crying. Daniel in that moment didn't understand what was going on. He's such a glass half full optimistic person always, which is so wonderful. <laughs> but I, I knew in my heart, I knew in that moment that the baby was gone. We went into the other room and I just remember crying and saying like, I can't have this happen again. Like I, I can't lose another pregnancy right now. And Daniel just saying like, it's okay. Like we don't even know anything yet. Like let's not jump to conclusions. Like let's just wait for her to come in. Let's wait to talk and um, see what's going on. And I was like, no, no, like it's like, it's gone. Our very sweet and kind PA came in um, and explained that I'd had a missed miscarriage. And I just remember being in shock and utter disbelief, truly disbelief and saying, are we sure? Are we sure? Like, like how sure are we? Like, I still feel very pregnant. Like, are, are we sure? Um, because when I think of a miscarriage, I think of cramping, bleeding, like signs of loss. Um, but in a missed miscarriage, it's not how it works. Your body thinks that you are still pregnant. Your body thinks that your baby is still alive within you after the baby has already passed. Your body is still progressing with the pregnancy and doesn't understand what's going on. I think it was at this point that Daniel understood what was going on fully. Uh, he was already sitting on the like patient, uh, we were both sitting on the patient bed together and he was just holding my hand and rubbing my back. She very quickly walked me through the three different options of either waiting for my body to understand what's going on, which she said could take weeks and I would then pass the baby or my body could never figure it out and I would need a DNC. The next option was to take pills, which she said would create contractions and stir up labor pains and I would then push the baby out. Um, she did say that it happens where, you know, not all of the tissue or everything is, is removed and you still have to get a DNC. And then the third option was getting a surgical DNC procedure where you are put under and everything is taken out um, while while you're under anesthesia. Making a decision like that after finding out that you lost your baby five minutes ago is horrific. I'm not sure if there's another word for it. So grateful to have options and be able to receive the medical care that I wanted in that moment, but horrible decision. There is no right decision. Um, I asked a lot of questions and I asked her a question that was a little bit graphic. So if you want to skip over this part, I asked that if I did the pills, if I would essentially see my baby come out, if I would see my baby in the toilet. At the stage where I was at eight weeks and five days that it would resemble what would be a baby. And if I wanted an autopsy to possibly figure out what went wrong, I would have to pull my baby out of the toilet and take it to get an autopsy. And I knew immediately in that moment that I was not mentally capable. That was not an option for me. So I told her to give me a minute. Daniel and I discussed, um, the option. Daniel kindly said that it was completely my decision and I decided in that moment to get a DNC the next day. We left the OB appointment and went home and just, you know, I just cried on and off, on and off, on and off. 
on and off sitting there on my couch with my deceased child inside of me, knowing that I would have to have surgery the next day to take, to remove my child from me. Um, it was just horrible. It's a crappy situation. <laughs> like, there's no other way of putting it. It's it just all around sucks. The next morning, Daniel took me to the hospital for surgery. Uh, they had me sign paperwork as to if I wanted an autopsy done, where would my child go after the autopsy? Would it go to a funeral home? Would it be cremated? Like uh, These were also decisions that I was not ready to make in that moment and wasn't aware that I was about to have to make. As we prepared for surgery, the doctor came in and said that she was delaying the surgery. She shared that my numbers were so high, my HCG was so high, my progesterone was so high, all of my blood work was looking so good, and that she wanted to be 100% positive that there was no longer a heartbeat, um, and, uh, and requested that we do another ultrasound, which I could not be more grateful for. Of course, I want to be 100% positive. But unfortunately, in that moment, it gave Daniel hope because once again, Daniel is that glass half empty person. So he immediately, you know, we spoke about it afterwards, but in that moment, he was thinking, oh my gosh, there was a mistake. Oh my gosh, we're still gonna have a baby. So we went through the process of having an ultrasound again for her to confirm that there unfortunately was still no longer a heartbeat. I very much so knew and believed that the baby was already gone, but it it did feel almost like going through it a second time all over again to see my husband have hope and then watch it be crushed again was no words. I woke up from surgery and Daniel brought me home. The recovery process comparatively to the laparoscopic surgery of the ruptured ectopic to the DNC was night and day. Yes, I was bleeding. Yes, I would have some cramping or contractions. I'm not exactly sure, but there was some pain, but it was nowhere near the excruciating pain that I experienced from the ruptured ectopic. With the first surgery, I would take two steps up the stairs and stop two steps up the stairs and stop. I mean, that was a very different recovery process. This, I was immediately walking up the stairs, tired, heavily bleeding, nothing great, but in terms of pain, the two experiences were very different. It is now one week and one day since my surgery. I am still bleeding, very little. I would, I would consider it spotting. I'm still wearing some period underwear. We have an appointment with the OB who did my surgery next week. I'm hopeful to possibly get answers. I don't know if the autopsy results will be in. I, I'm not sure from this point where we go, when we're allowed to try again. I, I don't know how it all works. I will say that we are sad. We are grieving. Um, we are wrestling with God, bringing our, our anger, our hurts, all, all our thoughts, everything to God. Um, I firmly believe that God's plan is better than my plan. His timing is perfect. His timing is better than my timing. I believe that with all my heart. But I would be lying to you if I told you that this is the plan that I would have picked for myself. This isn't the story that I wanted. Um, but I am trusting that God's ways are better than my ways. And on the days that I don't believe that fully, I pray for faith that, that I would believe it. It's something that Daniel said keeps coming to his mind is just choosing to praise God in the highs and praise him in the lows. And so as for our family, we will be praising God um, through the pain. And I honestly don't think that I will ever understand in this lifetime why I've experienced these losses back to back. And I, I don't need to. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to my story today. If you have a story of loss, I encourage you to share it below. Sometimes it is so therapeutic to just say it. I will be monitoring the comments as always and deleting anything that I feel is, hi Miss Wednesday, anything that I feel um, is negative or hurtful in any way. I want you to know and feel that this is a safe space 
and I will continue sharing my fertility journey with you. I will share the highs and lows and we will continue on this journey together. Thank you from the bottom of my heart again for listening and until next time, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye guys.